Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on how to reduce the power consumption of your Arduino projects. Uh, we've already done a great job lowering the power consumption. Uh, we talked about how to kill power to the Arduino with an external latch circuit. Uh, then I showed you how to force the Arduino into an ultra low power deep sleep state. And uh, the links to those videos are in the description below. In this video, we're going to leave the code alone, but instead change the input voltage and the frequency at which the Arduino is running at, and we'll run those experiments and see if we can reduce the power consumption even further. So uh, let's go ahead and get started over here. Okay, so just before we get started, I want to show you something kind of interesting that I observed with the circuit from the last video. Uh, just to recap, we've got the AT Mega 328P-PU here running at 16 megahertz uh, with 5 volts at the input. And uh, just like the last video, we're running this in its deepest state, or its deepest power state, which is the power down state. And uh, the code is exactly the same over here. The only difference is that I've disabled the watchdog timer stuff. So the only way to wake this up is with the digital input here. Oh. Let me just do that real quick. So when I press the digital input here, when it's sleeping, it wakes it up, the LED blinks, and then it, it goes into its deep sleep state. That deep sleep current is at about 0.34 microamps. Um, so one of the interesting things though, and you may have noticed this, is that I did not have the analog VCC or the analog ground on the other side of this 28-pin uh, PDIP package hooked up. So I hooked that up and uh, let me show you what I observed. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in ground and then AVCC and you can see that the current actually dropped from 0.345 or whatever it was to 0.145. Now, I mean, it's not like this is gonna change anything in your application at all, uh, but it is interesting, so keep that in mind. Um, so now let's just quickly re-enable that watchdog timer and, uh, and then we'll play around with the voltage and frequency. Okay, so now we've got the watchdog timer enabled and you can see that it's automatically waking up from uh, this deep sleep state and uh, that happens every eight seconds. Um, and let's just grab a quick baseline of what that is when it's sleeping. You can see it's about 6.3 microamps. And then when it's running, after the LED turns off, it's at about 11.5 milliamps. And you can see in the code here, I added a little delay right after when the LED turns off so that we can grab that measurement real quick. So 11.5 milliamps. Um, one thing though I wanna show you in the data sheet uh, is the speed grades section here. So this, you know, before you start messing with the voltage, you wanna take a look here at this uh, speed grade section because it shows you that you know, when you're running at 16 megahertz, five volts is fine, but you know, if you start dipping down to about three volts, you could run into some reliability issues. Now, it's not like that's gonna ma make a huge difference. I mean, we're, we are running right now uh, with a temperature, you know, room temperature. So, you know, if we're running at extreme hot and cold temperatures, that may be where these, this kind of thing uh, has a huge effect. Okay, so let's let's take a look and see what happens as we actually reduce the voltage. And again, we're running at 16 megahertz here and we're only going to change the input voltage and we just wanna keep an eye on the current. And you can calculate the power. Of course, the meter here can do that as well, but we're only interested in the current for, uh, for this experiment. So we're gonna fix the frequency, but change the voltage. Um, and we're gonna look at the running current and the sleep current and see what happens here. So we're at five volts and we got 11.5 milliamps and about, uh, what did, let me go back here. So we've got 11.5 milliamps and 6.3 microamps uh, for the sleep current. Again, we're running the watchdog timer. So let's go ahead and start messing with this voltage. So let's bring it down. Let's just slam it down to three volts. Okay, so this is three volts here, 5.6 milliamps now. So we that's a huge difference in the running current. The sleep current, let's see what happened there. Oops, I didn't wanna do that. Let's wait for it to go back into a sleep state so I can grab it right away, 5.6. And then we go down to about 4.28 microamps. So not a huge difference in the sleep current. 
uh, but a major difference in the running current. Uh, of course, we could keep going down here to, uh, we could try 2.8. I think it'll run to 2.8. So you know, let's just make sure it runs, uh, it'll, if it wakes up at 2.8. Yeah, it, it does wake up, but I can see on the meter it's getting a little flaky down there. Um, so I wouldn't run it any lower than 2.9. So this is perfect for uh, lithium cell a battery applications. So if your cell is fully charged at 4.2 and it drains down to about 2.9, this will run uh, straight through that uh, battery voltage range. Okay, so uh, that kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like when we're running at 16 megahertz. Now let's change the frequency to 8 megahertz and see what happens. Okay, so now the only thing I changed, the code is exactly the same. The only thing I changed is that now the crystal is running at 8 megahertz. Uh, of course, it is a different bootloader so that the delays and everything like that all line up. But it is just hardware-wise, where the only thing we change is the 8 megahertz crystal. Uh, looking up at the meter here, we're applying 5 volts. So the running current there when the LED turns off is at about 8 two milliamps so that's that's quite a bit of savings right there from the 11.5 we were seeing at 5 volts before let's see what the sleep current is I doubt that would change at all I'm gonna have to wait one more cycle here for it to, to go into a sleep 8.2 and then we drop down so about 6.8 microamps so it actually went up a little bit there from the six point, I think it was 6.3 or so we saw before. Uh, again, that could just be a variation from the actual part. I'm not using the same exact part. Um, I mean, they are the same part number, but they're not physically the same part. So that could be a variation in just the manufacturing of the part. So anyway, we see a reduction in the running current. Uh, now let's change this voltage and see what we get. So let's drop it down to three volts here. Okay, so now we're at 3 volts. It's running fine. The running current now is 3.7 milliamps. So that's huge. That's a huge drop from the uh, the original 11.5 milliamps we saw with the, uh, the 5 volt part running at 16 megahertz. So that's quite a bit of savings there just by running it at 3 volts or even 3.3 volts. Okay, which is a typical uh, voltage for these systems. So that's 4.3 milliamps. Uh, now let's just take a quick look and see what that deep sleep current is. And there we go. Let's take a look. 4.7 microamps. Okay. So so we're starting to gather all the data here, and we can clearly see that running at 8 megahertz saves you a lot of running current um, versus the 16 megahertz. But here's one thing to keep in mind, and this is kind of where you gotta you gotta really figure it out and it varies depending on your application. Even though this is running at eight megahertz, it's much slower than the 16 megahertz. So like, let's say you waked up, sorry, you wake up from your, from your deep sleep, you have to perform some task and then you go back to sleep. Well, if you're running like a spy port, for example, at full tilt, uh, that's gonna be limited by your crystal frequency. So, um, and specifically on these parts, you could run with the 16 megahertz part. You could run, um, you could run your spy port at 8 megahertz uh, with the 8 megahertz crystal. The fastest you can run that is at 4 megahertz. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is that even though you're running slower with a lower power consumption, it's going to take you twice as long to get in and out of your when you're when you're awake doing some task. So, you know, depending on your application, that might not matter. You might wake up and have to do something that takes several seconds. But if you have to wake up, perform a task as fast as you possibly can, and then get back to sleep, then it might make sense to go with the 16 megahertz crystal. So anyway, those are all kind of design considerations that you have to uh, take into account when designing your low power application. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to talk about... Um, the power supplies themselves. So the linear regulators, uh, the DC to DC converters, uh, will eventually get into different batteries and uh, so on. So this is going to be a long running series on low power design, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And you can see that, you know, we're making a lot of progress incrementally as these videos go on. So uh, anyway, that's the video and uh, thanks for watching.